This is a series of films that tells the history of contemporary fashion photography as seen through the eyes of models. Oh, well, here he is. There he goes. There he is, there he is. You know who is it? You know who this is. What is that? Oh my God, Carl with a beard. <laughs> what is that, Max? He was such a baby. So tell me a little bit, because there's a connection between Antonio Lopez, you staying in Paris at his flat, and Karl Lagerfeld. They were best friends. Antonio came to Europe because of Karl. Right. He went to Paris because yeah. Karl invited him, uh -huh. and Karl put him up, and all of us in that so Vogue, the, the, the hotel in Bonaparte. Did Karl, did he steal him from Vogue? Because if he was working in the green room in Vogue. I think it was just that everybody wanted to come to the City of Lights, right, to be okay. in the City of Lights. Right. And when you're American, you want to go to Paris, where yeah. couture is king. Yeah, yeah. And because of the couture house and Carl Lagerfeld and Antonio's relationship and Andy Warhol had a lot to do with it. Oh, really? Because Andy Warhol was yeah. the pop art and he was like underground and mysterious with all of his crazy drag queens and people yeah. from the streets. You know, when you come from a certain society, like you're high in society, you're curious about what goes on underground yes. in the night. Yes. You know, you go out to get into trouble. Yeah. And so I guess we were the trouble that Carl was looking for. <laughs> way to put <laughs> because we could dance Latin and we brought our music with us and he was, I think he loved that. Yeah. He loved being avant-garde and the right. fact that, you know, Andy Warhol was so popular, getting popular and yeah. it was forbidden. It was like a forbidden fruit, passion fruit, right. you know, and he was like, he wanted that. And so we brought that with us. We brought this ethnic body of people that was so odd. It was like, yeah. boom, he was like that chocolate that has firecrackers in it now uh -huh. and he was like tasting that and we were like giving that to him yeah. and he and I and all of us became like a family and yeah. we merged and that energy just blossomed into Paris and people were like I remember the first day we were walked into La Coupole and I had Marlene's Malina Dietrich's Blue Angel lingerie on, uh -huh. which they didn't deliver to her because she, we were late for dinner and she said, don't come over because really? I cooked. And if you don't come in time, you're not getting the food. So we were like, okay, we're going we're gonna to take your lingerie and go to La Capole for dinner. <laughs> so I came, he gave me this Scaparelli jacket, I remember. Yeah. But he says, no, don't wear that. Wear this. And yeah. I had only the G-string and we went out to dinner. And before you know it, something happened. We went into La Capole and I had that sheer thousand pleats. When you stand straight, the pleats don't show through. Yeah. La Capole is a big, big restaurant. Big, important restaurant because uh -huh. all the fashion people gathered there like butterflies in September. Uh, but it was really June and it was my birthday. I remember June 23rd, 1971. I just turned 21 and my dreams were coming through very clearly like manifesting and I went to Carl's apartment with Antonio and Juan and Donna didn't come with us because she was working and Curry Tippin was there and we walked in Carl's apartment yeah. and it was beautiful because it was all art deco and mirrors everything everywhere and cat lilies I remember and hmm. beautiful vases 1920s and black lacquered floor and we walked and it was uh, so mysterious and I had never met Carl and they were talking about this Carl Oh, Carl, this Carl, that we're gonna go see Carl. And I was like, oh my God, it's the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and I went and he, and I didn't know he was behind me. And the first thing he did is he loves to play jokes on you. And I was standing this way and he came up behind me and he did one of those knee bumps where you're standing yeah. straight. And he, he said, ha ha ha, I got you. And it started out with a laugh. And he yeah. looked at me and said, oh my dear, how do you like being here? And he yeah. kissed my hand and I thought, Kiss my hand, I'm a lady. He said, Miss Cleveland. And, and the boys were like, yeah, you know, and they said to me, Antonio said, say something. And I was like so in shock that he kissed my hand. I was like, ooh. So I said, thank you for having us in Paris. He said, oh my dear, we have to get dressed to go out. You're gonna wear this tonight. And I put it on, thank God I had my G-string with me. And I just had that and that sheer thing. And we got to La Capole and suddenly we were walking through the door and you know how it is show off time and the peacocks are arriving. Mm -hmm. The boys had their feathers out in their tuxedos, which they wore a lot of in those days. Yeah. Everywhere you went, everybody, all the boys had in tuxedos at night. Really? Because they were imitating the 1920s. Yes, I guess, yeah, yeah. And so we went to that cafe with those beautiful drawings of Josephine Baker mm -hmm. in the 1920s and ting, ting, ting and the crystals and the chandeliers. And we walked in and then suddenly 
I was in front of the boys and I remember my dress got caught in one of the tiles and I was trying to get it off and it pulled back like that and I was like, oh my God, and I went like that and it opened and I feel like a, a bird in flight and suddenly everybody was like, oh, and I was nude with those angel wings of indigo blue, it was an electric blue, and I only had in my gold goody two high heel shoes which were like platforms almost that high, and I was standing there and I just like that moment stood still, and before you knew it, everybody was applauding in the restaurant and tinging on their glasses, and everybody was saluting us, and they sent us free champagne, and they paid for our dinner, and I thought that dress worked it, <laughs> but that was partially my, ba my birthday suit too. Yeah, I'm sure, My birthday suit. a lot to do with that. <laughs> that was different. Yeah. But anyway, so we sat there and Carl was so happy and, you yeah. know, the boys looked so elegant. But Carl was already working as designer for Chloe at that point? That was a big deal because Chloe, oh my God, she loved Carl and Carl was setting the pace. He was yeah. making silk things with Tiffany's design of yeah. vases on them and shawls and everything was so feminine and soft and luxurious, yeah. you know, very lightweight. Because in the 70s, we loved everything that flowed because we were going out to dance. Yeah. So the fabrics were very like chiffon or very silk, you know, and very like almost 1920s, you know, like yeah. ladies, the body form, a little, a little bit androgynous, long shape. That's why I fit in because I didn't have the curve you know, and it was sort of yeah. long in yeah. 1920s. And I just remember he gave me a trunk of clothes, a trunk full oh, of lovely. clothes. And I had to take that trunk with me everywhere. And one day I went traveling, I had to leave the trunk, and when I came back, that trunk had disappeared. Oh, really? With all those scaparellis that he'd given oh, no, me. Because cool. he collected clothing, you yeah. know, from yeah. Yeah. people that he admired. Yeah. So I was heartbroken. So I don't have really many Carl Lagerfelds left. What a shame. Yeah, it was a shame. But he replenished the collection for I'm me. I'm sure so he did. I'm sure he, he was did. very generous with me. And you said you used to go out dancing. You were quite, um, I mean, I obviously read your book, but you were quite, dancing was quite important in your life. Oh my God, it's tribal. Yeah. My God, when I went out with Antonio to Club Set, which was down below, we even had our theme songs when we entered because the disc jockey loved us. <laughs> and I remember the song, da da dun, da da dun, da da dun, da. You know, Shaft, da oh, da. Yeah. That was the song. Nobody heard that in Europe. It was like the hottest thing, you know, it was like one of those black spy movies and people had afros and you were coming in with your gun. <laughs> well, I came in with my golden pumps, you know, my high heels coming down into the club, down the stairs. And when he saw that foot arrive, the song went on. And before you knew it, we came into the club and we took over the dance floor. And at that time, Antonio was into Apache dancing. Right. And, what's Apache and you know dancing? what that is? It was, no, I don't. Oh my God, it's so French. <laughs> it was the dance of the, it was like a dance yeah. that was about a woman who possessed, a man who possessed a woman. Right. A little bit like that, you know, right. underground. What yeah. do they call them? The gigolo possesses the woman uh -huh. or the woman who uses the lady to get money but he would command that she paid attention to him. Yeah. And it was kind of a tango. And he'd throw you out across the room and you go sliding across the room and then you come back and attack. <laughs> and then really give him what for. Like it was a man and a woman fighting like two snakes squeezing each other in love, yeah. a tango. Yeah. Oh, you can look it up. I will. It was very <laughs> popular in the 20s. Yeah. And it was a forbidden dance and we would do it. And then it was tribal at the same time. It was. Certain people would say, like, yeah. they would come into the dance floor, like, who's going to win this dance? Who's yeah. the strongest? Who's going to take over the dance floor? And it was always me and Antonio, because right. we were tribal. We had that little bit of American Indian in us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was like a great meeting. And there were these cubes you could dance on, and Donna Jordan would dance in the cubes. And, you know, yeah. it was a showtime. Yeah. Well, on that showtime subject. Yes. It's a picture that I found ages ago and sort of fell in love with. Wow. And it, you always get credited for it, but I can't see you anywhere in the picture. Oh, what is that? Oh, that picture, yeah, I'm there, but I'm on, on the other this side, side, probably. Right, okay. And look at Carl, how happy with Aya, um, Susie, she was the biggest madame, uh, oh, really? Antonio, the, we used to go have dinner, uh, Jacques. 
whom now, I introduced who, to Carl. Who was he? He looks like a very interesting young he man. He was a royal. Right. A young royal. From which royal I, family? I have no idea. I don't know anything about that. But right. I knew he was nice and lonely and he wanted to meet Carl. Right. And so we were down in the south of France and the boys were being like, da da da. So I snuck <laughs> him under my bed while everybody was out. And when <laughs> Carl came in, I said, oh, this is Jacques. He wanted to meet you because he was so in love with Carl. Because really? he was such a wonderful, uh, aesthetically important in the way that he could read books, he knew stories, yeah. he, he wanted to be with Carl. Right. And he's an incredibly handsome young man, he's incredibly well dressed. Yeah, he's impeccable. So you say he was a part of some royal family. When, what was his profession? What was he doing? Where was he going? He was, was just it? a young royal right. out and about seeking mischief in right. the night. <laughs> And we were the mischievous ones, you know, we're the fashion yeah. crew with a, a lot of aesthetic values, you know, we understand and appreciate it. We didn't do drugs, we didn't right. do naughty things. Our naughtiness was yeah. how fierce we could be in our, our dressing and appearance, yeah. you know, and he loved that. He yeah. loved layers of clothes and yeah. dressing well, because they were gentlemen, actually. Right. Very, very kind and very well dressed. Yeah. So where we, uh, wherever we went, there were diamond stick pins and shopping for jewelry. And yeah. you know, I sort of think it was the best thing, you know, for yeah. young people to be. Yeah, involved. no, but he, he looks incredibly. He's so well beautiful dressed. and very delicate. And, and what know, happened to him? Oh, he passed away tragically at a very young age. Already? Because of something that was going around. Mm. Not the well, it wasn't a well thing. Right. It came into our fashion community and yeah. devastated yeah, yeah. us because it took the lives of many young lovers, yeah. you know, yeah, and the yeah, love yeah. story that went behind the invasion of this virus, which mm. they called, na later named AIDS, yeah. you know, um, took a lot of lovely it, people. It was, so you grew up in a... I mean, you were, um, most of you were, uh, yeah. you grew up in the 1970s. I grew up, yeah, in the 60s, actually, 60s. I started modeling yeah. in the 60s. But it was a rare time in, in sexual freedom. Oh my God, for a woman? Are you kidding? We had our own cigarette, Virginia Slims. We had padded shoulders and atop it off, I mean, Yves Saint Laurent made suits for women that closed during the day, but at night they had transparent tops so you knew who was who. <laughs> women with transparent tops. I remember I did this one show in London and the princess was there, Anne, and I had to come out for Yves Saint Laurent and he made me wear that transparent top. I said, no, I can't wear this because the princess is out there and she's gonna hate me. And I walked out and I had to open that top right in front of her and she gave me the dirtiest look like, how dare you show me your headlights on the <laughs> runway. And I was like, oh no, I, I lost a friend that I didn't even make yet. But then Princess Margaret loved me. Cause yeah. that night after the show, I was standing in front of these mirrors and she came behind me and I didn't know she was behind me. And I stepped back on her train yeah. and she turned around and she was so happy. And she said, hi, what's your name? And before you knew it, we were standing in front of these crazy carnival uh, mirrors laughing yeah. at each other. Yeah. And then I knew there was no difference between us. No. There's nothing that you humans. can do to take a good yeah. laugh, yeah. keep it lighthearted, and laugh your way through all the yeah. problems. Yeah. You know? And so that's the royal family. You know, they grew up and they're still growing. And at that time, they loved fashion, you know, yeah. and it started that they had a certain society of fashion, but everybody started exploding. Fashion became something that everyone could see, yeah. you know, and things changed. But mm. at that time it was very private. Yeah, but mm. sexually you had freedom. Oh, you had we're going pill. back to that, yeah. yeah. You had the pill that and question. it was pre-AIDS. Yeah. The pill made, uh, gave uh, women extra tools to work with that boys already had. It's called freedom. <laughs> no responsibility here. You can go to the chocolate box and taste all the different flavors if you wanted to. And there was no disease. And what does a girl want more than beautiful men as an accessory? And you can pick and choose in the world of fashion. Everybody was like in love. And you know that song that goes, love the one you with, ding, 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 love the one you with. That that was our theme song, <laughs> especially for girls. <laughs> Very different um, to, from today, sadly. Oh, it's deadly at one point. I remember everybody started wearing black and it became deadly. I said, is this a funeral or what? Well, it probably was for sexual <laughs> liberation. Yeah.